Welcome to the most exclusive girls' club in the world, the Sanex WTA Women's Tennis Tour. <laughs> They're treated like princesses wherever they go, and the top players are all millionaires. Land of milk and honey. Wow. Opportunity. Which other sport allows a female to make the amount of money that tennis does? There is a price to pay. Looking good for the sponsors, a ruthless ranking system, and pushy parents. Winning is not everything, it's the only thing. It's a relentless treadmill of tournaments, travel, and tedium. I never been to a big, big party or something, and I never speak, you know, to, to my friends like my age. Meet the class of 2002. From Russia, Anna Kurnikova. It's party time for the tennis tourists. From Belgium, Jim Clasers. The WTA Tour is almost like an American high school sorority where you've got all these young women thrown together. You've got the pretty women at the top who, who, who may not be particularly successful, but they're, they're popular because they're good looking. And then you've got the, the, the girls sort of underneath who get, get the results, but um, perhaps don't, don't make it in the popularity stage. Very much like a high school. Behind the scenes is a team of thousands running the tour for the players. The WTA staff themselves, are, I suppose, are a bit like the teachers. They know that, that it's important for the kids to do well, but at the same time they try and control them a bit because I suppose essentially their livelihood depends on, on the kids as well. That's for you. No, 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 wait, I have to ask a few more questions now. <laughs> <That's> pretty good. <laughs> Every week of the year, there's at least one WTA tournament somewhere in the world. It's September, and the tours reach the town of Filderstadt in Germany. It's far from the most important title on the tour. There's only $565,000 in prize money at stake. But on the upside, the tournament is sponsored by local car makers, Porsche, who've helped make it a magnet for the top players and the world's media. I'm standing right next to them, I'll let them know. WTA communications manager John Dolan is the Alistair Campbell of the women's tennis tour. I think our first goal is to look after, I wouldn't use the word protect, but you do what's in the best interest of the players. Um, and on the other hand, you're, you know, you've got to understand the media's needs and you have to try and give them a piece. For instance, if it's, you know, I don't want to you know, mention a name, but maybe if it's the Sunday Times or, some, or a Newsweek or Time, it's a really big request. That's something that you shouldn't laugh at and that's something that, that is in the best interest of the player. And our job then is to convince the player that this is something that's really worthwhile doing. Um, do you want to follow me onto the court um, when we're hitting the match balls into the crowd with Anka as well? So you can come on. Our job essentially is getting um, millionaires to do what they don't like to do, so it does present a challenge on that front. So there's a guy here from British Tennis Magazine, yeah. and uh, he wants to do everything. The big part of our job is understanding the, um, the psychology of the different players because each personality is so different. You have to you know, pick the right moment if someone is lost or if um, you know, it's not quite the right time. You have to judge yourself when is the, the right time to do something. Sometimes it's never the right time. You just have to go ahead and do it. John's taken a gamble and promised an on-court interview with Anna Kornikova, who's just lost. Anna, will you take two questions from TV? Sure. No way. No way. Sorry. Sorry. Anna Kornikova is one of the biggest earners on tour. She has more hits on her website than Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods combined. She's yet to win a singles title. As a tennis coach, what you're looking for is a fast-thinking, reactive, I hand coordinated phenomenally quick athlete. I don't care whether, whether she looks like Bridget Bardot or she looks like the dog next door. Uh, bottom line. But from a packaging perspective, how, how important has Kornikova been for, for, the, for the tennis tour? She still hasn't won a title, 
what is she doing to the benefit of tennis? Well, she's selling it, but she has a wonderful ability to sell because she's attractive. Like I said, I'm coming off eight month injury, so right now I have no certain things that, you know, I just want to be healthy, try to get to the level where I was when I had the injury. The tour is a roller coaster governed by wins and losses, which the WTA converts into those crucial ranking points. So you always know if you're up or if you're down. Um, as far as Maggie's points go for the championship, Hingis is ranked number one. She's worth 100 points. So she'd get automatically 100 points for beating Hingis right now, plus uh, 26 points for moving into the next round. So that's at least 126 points that she would have. She's, she's sitting at number 17 right now. Uh, her only threats are Coach Huber and Shep. A lot of people are probably very good at what they do, but they don't have a ranking system. <laughs> we play tennis well, but we're not uh, extraordinary people, I don't think. You know, what you're really doing as a tennis player is getting on to this merry-go-round, and, you know, with every turn of the wheel, the stakes keep escalating. And to paraphrase Darwin, you know, the, the fittest survive. Everybody loves Fildersten because we get presents every night in the room. Uh, the other day we had uh, all the players like presents, <laughs> even if they're stupid. Every night I give the presents from Dieter Fischer to the, all the players. It's really nice. It's yeah, they like the presents, really. We had some perfume, and we had this. This is very useless, but he's cute. I, I hate this, but otherwise, I, I slept with him, actually. <laughs> we, I used to have a lot of those when I was younger, and I always, always carried them with me on tournaments. And I just had a nice memory. <laughs> John is on the phone to his sister in Ireland. Susan? Hello, darling. Susan, you know what tournament I'm at this week? You know what tournament I'm at this week? Fil yes, Filterstadt. The one with the presents. Yes. I got, um, <laughs> I got a Hugo um, for, for women. But this is also the tournament with the, um, the sports cars. Um, do, do you want me to get you one? Or? 80A or 57B. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. They're perfect for tennis players, and she's going to um, she's going to play tennis now. And she just realised that um, she doesn't have a a recent sports bra. How embarrassing. Feel the snatch to go. Wow. We were like big kids, though, weren't we, when we went there? Because you like every day you run into your room and you think, oh, what's the present today? And and you'd always come in and go, I've got this. Well, look at what you've got, because I was the player and you were the coach. Yeah. It was still a nice present. I mean, it was really a bit pathetic, but... Yeah, they dangled ex exceptionally good carrots away from the, 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 the tennis court. This is one of the best tournaments for the players, for the staff. I mean, yeah, there are one or two perks in Fullerstadt, yeah. that's for sure. Like, the bus, the bus excursion is talked about, like, the whole year. Not surprising, given the very generous discount they get. I got uh, four suits in four different colours. Um, I think I've got enough suits to keep me going now for a year or two, but I got like four suits for under £700. That's, that's phenomenal. Two button, new style. White for my angel boyfriend. And I got some, some perfume for a uh, friend of mine. It's her birthday, so... Uh, I wanted only my uh, perfume, but I don't like uh, Yugo Boss perfume. <laughs> Um, I won't be eating for the next three weeks, but but that's okay because I'll be looking nice. So. It's kind of a, ra a rap looking. <laughs> you know, he just needs the big uh, gold thing, <laughs> and he'll be just like Dr. Dre. You know, Kurnikova didn't get so much stuff. She, was she got the shortest skirt again. <laughs> On the tour, the majority of top players are coached, not as you might think, by a hired professional, but by one of their parents. 
World number one, Martina Hingis, is coached by her mother, and Mrs. Kornikova coaches her daughter. Today, the pressure's really on for Martina. She must win her next match against Lindsay Davenport to remain the world number one. Ms. Hingis is in danger of losing her number one ranking for the first time in uh, over a year, actually. has twisted her ankle. Um, the trainer is going to go and evaluate right now. See, maybe she'll tape it and um, um, give it some sort of support and Martina will see if she can play on. Roger, come in. Yes, John. Worst case scenario, um, to uh, the DSF studio and uh, I'll deal with the trainer and Martina, okay? Okay, I'll, um, I'll come down. I've been told by our media guys is that that makes Jennifer Caprioli number one in the world. Okay, people, listen up. We're going to court. We need to know just how new this new car really is. How's this changed? Why is that different? Have they moved the mirror on? I want the life story of every hinge, every nut, every damn piece of wire. Find me blueprints, find me drawings, find me moments of inspiration. And June, ask the guy who's responsible for the chassis just what he did that no one's ever done before. Oh, and will someone please find out what's so prestigious about Prestige Blue? I just got out of the meeting, thought I'd call. No, I'm back at the hotel. Oh, honey, you should see this place. It is fabulous. Yeah, I've got a kettle and a lovely bed. And I've got my own fridge. And there's a trouser ironing thing. Oh, yeah, and the most amazing view. We can't make going away on business any more glamorous than it is. But we can make it more bearable with a Mileage Plus program that grows miles quickly. We are united. Fairy's got a new, thicker formula that gives you long-lasting, creamy suds. New, thicker Fairy. It'll blow you away. It's hard work protecting kids from the sun. So try Garnier Ombre Solaire Kids Milk 60, our highest kids protection. It gives 60 times the skin's natural protection against sunburn. And it's sand and water resistant. Garnier Ombre Solaire Kids Milk 60. Relax. No one makes the sun safer. We can all do something to help keep Britain's hearts healthy. Join Shredded Wheat and help support the British Heart Foundation's Walkabout UK. And to get each of you started, Shredded Wheat will sponsor you for £5. Help a heart. Take part. Here's Maureen. She's tough. She's here to show Barbara that unlike traditional kitchen towels, a wet, yes, a wet sheet of bounty can even be used to tackle those tough cleaning tasks. Why? Because bounty is so incredibly strong when wet, it refuses to fall apart, even in the hands of the strongest housewives. Dear me. And it's super absorbent for those little accidents. Bounty, have you tried it wet yet? First, Dyson created a cyclone, giving incredible suction. Now we've developed smaller, tighter cyclones, so that in the same space the power can be multiplied. Again, and again, and again. Creating the first ever eight cyclone cleaner, the most powerful upright, with no loss of suction. The new Dyson Rutate Cyclone. More cyclones, more power.
Michael, es geht gar nicht von der Regel. Julia, go ahead. Now John needs to find Capriati, or her father, to give them the news they've waited 10 years to hear, that Jennifer is officially world number one. Who would have thought Jennifer Capriati would make the comeback? She did. Capriati was a washed up, burned out case. She was somebody who's going through the motions on a tour. She was like 17 or 18 and she got herself in a bit of trouble. There was some shoplifting and then she was, uh, I guess, arrested. You know, there was, she, she was with a bad crowd. There was some drugs involved and things like that. Jen, can I talk to you for one minute to get some quotes? Yeah. Can I just come into the office? It's a bit hectic out here. Should I go? I was trying to call you on your phone. Were you eating oh, here? Was that you? Yeah. Oh, well, I had a silence. Ah, okay. Hello. Well, hello, Missy. Do you want to take a seat? Yeah. No. You pretty much have a pretty fair idea. Congratulations. Is it for sure? Yeah, it is for sure, so oh, congratulations. Lindsay Davenport's more concerned about their next doubles match. Zurich, are you sure? Jesus. Did you talk to her about playing doubles? No. Okay. Well, we were going to ask to play Monday, so I don't know if you care. Uh, I mean, well, I don't really want to play. Okay, well, Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it, they'll fill someone else in now. I don't even know I was playing. Sorry, we played that team, so I was going to ask her if she might play Monday. But she said she's not. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Yes, thank you. Sorry. I've got no rush. Thank you. 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 Jennifer's father, Stefano Capriati, has masterminded every step of his daughter's path to the top. The dynamic that exists between a father and child is very, very difficult to analyze and predict, and one could never rationally understand why players react in certain ways. Here she probably played too many tournaments, probably was trotted around to too many places. That decision probably was made by her parents. I think mistakes were made, and I bet, I, I'd like to feel that, that someone like Mr. Capriati would look back and say, I would have done this differently. But maybe there's, a, there's always a, a romantic side to most stories, and here they are both back together, so there has to be some degree of joy between the two. How much influence has the parent got? It's become an industry, mm. and everyone is sitting there kind of thinking, how can I make some action out of this? And I'm afraid, in a way, the players have become vulnerable to it as well. My childhood was nothing like what it is now for them when they stop school at 9 or 10 and, and you know, play tennis four hours a day. Now it must be much more difficult for the kids because they really do lose a sense of normal, whatever normal is. Um, as a friend of mine says, normal is a cycle on the washing machine, you know? dream to be a tennis player because my dad started me. I didn't pick up the racket one day and start going at it. He started us with little by little. Once you get older, you kind of realize what's going on, who you are and what you want, and it becomes your dream. So that's how it happened. I started when I was nine. My father br brought me to the tennis court, and I didn't. When I was coming, I didn't even know what what the tennis is. What do I have to do? She, he just told, told me that it's going to be like ball and a racket. I mean, it was very strict for me. The, the, the this this uh, period. I guess at the end it makes you stronger, and that's why uh, you fight on the court. When I was three years old, four years old, I know I played at my first tournament. Once the parents have got their children out of the cradle and onto the tennis court, they're set for a world of almost unlimited money, if somewhat limited horizons. It's another week, and there's another $1,185,000 to win. The tennis tournaments are the same no matter where you go. So you could really, if you could pick up Wimbledon and forgetting the grass courts, but pick up the people and the infrastructure, and if you plop it down in uh, Uzbekistan, uh, it's the same thing. It's a hermetically sealed, insular world that travels from one place to another, brings its own habits and values. I don't like a dirty desk. It's not dirty, but it's cluttered. 
Moscow is not the player's favorite pit stop. No Porsches, but lots of diplomacy and culture. We're here this morning because um, the top men and female players are here to meet the mayor of Moscow. Um, it's a really big deal because the mayor of Moscow is a huge fan of tennis and uh, obviously the Kremlin Cup is one of the most important sporting events in Moscow. So we're here to appease the mayor and uh, hopefully the girls will have a good time, sample some of the Muscovite culture and um, yeah. I think I was lucky enough in that I always did take pride in how I dressed, but you know, when we go along with the players to these sponsor engagements, you know, we are, I guess, caught on TV a little bit, you know, in the background, and um, it doesn't look, if you turn up maybe dressed like a hippie, I think you should take pride, just like I think the players do as well, in how they look on the court and, you know, how you represent the sport. The only pants I have that are lined are leather pants, and I've got, um, what colour too? You know, like the tan colour, like this, kind of like this colour in leather, yeah. like, and I've got a jacket too, it's kind of like orangey, Camel, that color oh, is yeah. really, really nice. Every tennis player personality is her own person or his own person. The interesting pieces of this career are to try to maximize the opportunities for each player in a way that is specialized to them. Dominic Bliss is casting a raised editorial eyebrow over Kornikova's latest venture. Yeah, we've just had the pictures sent in from uh, Enrique Iglesias' new video where Anna Kornikova stars in, in a rather compromising position, I think. She certainly is a role model, as, as a, an example of someone who's done well in sport and broken out of, of a, a less rich country and moved to the States and become a millionaire. You know, it's, it's a great role model. For, for anyone who wants to make a lot of money. It looks like Hannah's going to lose, uh, playing another Russian. That's not going to be an easy loss, I don't think, for her. One of us has to deal with the winner, one deals with the loser. Um, I think the important thing in dealing with the loser coming off the court is, especially here in Russia, you've got to make sure with a Russian player that you know some camera crew doesn't all of a sudden walk up to the player and accost them and shove a microphone in their face because once they've got the camera off them, it's very difficult for the player themselves just to you know wave them off, and that's where we come in and try and help them out and just say no, thank you. We can do that after the press conference. Roger's going to take uh, Galina. It's going to be a great win for her, um, and I'll take uh, Anna to press. Oh, there we go. Whether Anna wins or loses, nothing can stop tennis becoming, to young Russians, the most desirable way out of post-perestroika poverty. Following the Anna Kornikova era, there are many young Russians now ranked among the top 100 players in the world. Lena Krasnoruskaya was also a world number one junior player, and she has led a very strong group of young Russian players onto the professional tour. I can't Gaia. pronounce the name. <laughs> and I, I would argue that Lena Krasnodskaya uh, to date has not fulfilled the promise we saw two years ago, but still a very young lady. Maybe she's feeling it, the pressure. Maybe it's too hot in the kitchen. Tremendous parental demand. Um, expectation was huge two years ago. Most of the tennis punters thought this girl was destined. I live in a world where, uh, where everyone is older than me and I have to be older and uh, because I need to understand everyone, uh, what they want from me, what I want and uh, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes I want to be a small girl, like 17 years old, I want to speak to my friends, I want to go somewhere, but for me, it's nice that I'm getting older and older, and it's good for my life. For Lena's situation, it's, it's because family, very good sports family, mama played tennis. Everything she, I think, she um, dream and she think about Lena to go and just, just play tennis. And she do, I mean, everything and that to, 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 to be, to make Lena good enough. Like true professional tennis parents, Lena's mother and father gave up their jobs to coach their daughter. Oh, 
I've heard that she was really pushed when she was younger by her parents. And um, her parents have got plans to build a new house. I think they might be building it at the moment. So with, with the money that she's made, presumably. There's also enough money to pay for a coach to keep a firm grip on the family asset. I'm a young player and uh, she can do everything she wants with me because if she gets this, the player like who is already 25, who is already like a big person, or uh, it's like it's hard, you know, she can't change her or him. And for, with me, you know, she can change everything she wants because I don't have anything yet. In terms of strokes or personality? or Personality, you know personality. If you're a bad man or you're not listening to anyone, you know, it's so hard to get the result. <laughs> Lena was knocked out in the first round of the singles. You used to see them losing because there's only one winner every week. So you've got to take, you know, the girls to do their media requirements and do their press very, you know, quickly, sometimes after a loss. And the thing we have to teach them is, you know, they have to try and calm down within that 20 minute period, try and cool down. A shower often works wonders. Okay. Lena, let's go. In recent months, injuries have forced Lena well down the world rankings. But here in Moscow, she did get to the doubles final. And there's plenty of time for Lena. She's still only 17 years old. Others have not been so lucky. There's massive graveyards all around the case with child prodigies at 12 and 13 that haven't become uh, Wimbledon and the US Open champions by 18, 19. I just hope they're sane and enjoying life somewhere. It's a fact that women are better at doing two things at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So while you're busy stretching yourself in all directions, it's good to know Always Ultra now protects you in two ways. New Ultra has even longer, flexible wings and a special Optima Absorb core that quickly draws liquid inside, safely locking it away. So now you're doubly protected. You can get on with being doubly... Brilliant? Always talking your body's language. Could Dad play for United? Oh, I doubt it. Their players are worth millions and millions. Go on, son! Standard life savings and investments perform consistently well. So you could be worth more than you think. So how much is Dad worth? Based on that performance? Not a lot. Come on, boy! Standard life for pensions, investments, healthcare and banking. Would you call yourself adventurous? Perhaps you're just not aware that you live in one of the most inhospitable places on Earth, where people fight over parking spaces and idiots cross without warning, a place where you must edge out gradually, keep your distance, and offer up prayers to the god of traffic lights. Please stay green. Please stay green. Of course you're adventurous. You just happen to live in Orpington, that's all. I know everything. When the rain will fall. Where the traffic jams are. I get the news that's important to me. I know where the gigs are. And what's the latest score? I'm never alone. I'm at my desk while I'm on the train. I email from the beach. I make my own world and take it with me at all times. Orange puts a whole range of services in the palm of your hand. For more information, visit orange.co.uk. The future's bright. The future's orange. This one's a real beauty. Take her up, Hank. Forget the cowboys. You can now buy a fully guaranteed used car through the AA. And if you change your mind within 30 days, you can swap it for another. Call 0800 032 0932. Just ask. The odds against getting one child into the world's top ten are huge. 
But Maggie Maleva's mother is the only one to have done it for three. Coffee number one. Maggie's future was decided while she was still in the womb. I think the dress uh, is 75. Excellent. This is when I was born. Yes. Before or after? <laughs> uh, 88 days after Maggie was born, I became uh, champion again for the eighth time. 88 days, not even three months. OK. The Malevas are a unique and wonderful tennis family. The tradition of tennis in the family goes way back. Um, the mother of the three girls, Yulia, was nine times Bulgarian national champion, and she was determined to give opportunities to her daughters. And the success of having three daughters, each of whom has been ranked in the top six of the world, is a singular accomplishment and one that will be very difficult for any family to repeat in tennis. When did you first decide that you were going to coach your daughters to be champions? No, I, ne no. <laughs> I never made the, such a decision. I could never even think of uh, what happened later. Um, I just did my job day by day, step by step, and um, it happened. Seems like they don't have me as a baby anyway. <laughs> That's my dad. That's a nice one. My dad is very handsome here. My mom is a bride. Eighty-two. You are seven. Yeah, and and uh, she is. Uh, she just won a prize. Yeah, but you were not very nice to me then because I lost two toilets. <laughs> What did you lose? And how about the final under 10 years old? <laughs> Look at your forehead. It's a perfect. Nice perfect. But I like that racket so much. It was my favorite mm -hmm. racket. And this dress, mm -hmm. I, I, it's the first one I got. No, someone gave it to you. Yeah, why? Second hand. <laughs> Manuela is the oldest of the three sisters and the one who left Bulgaria. She lives in Switzerland with her three children. I think I was pushed by my mother very, very hard. Um, on one hand, uh, this is of course wh why I uh, became a good player, why I was in the top ten and why I won so many tournaments. And on the other hand, for me as a child, this was something that was tough to have a mother so strict and who mm. didn't give me any other choices than tennis mm. in life. But of course, it's thanks yeah, to my mother that uh, we've achieved what we've achieved. She got them and she trained them and she got them to where they were in the world. I mean, you know, it's an unbelievable effort when you think that you know one was three, one was four and one was five in the world in their period of their careers. We never had days off. We would play every day. There was no, no holiday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we played. Uh, holiday, day, uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve. Uh, but I don't have the courage to do this with my children. Are you close to your mother now? Yes, I'm close. I'm much closer to her now than growing up, I would say. She doesn't worry about your children at all, she just... She loves playing tennis with them. She wants them to play tennis very badly, so every time we go back to Sofia, they, they are supposed to be at the tennis court every day, every morning. And, but OK, I think okay, Some things for haven't week, changed. for two weeks. Oops, cut it. Gulliam. What jeans did I have? to become a champion, nothing. You just learn. I believe in this, that you can learn everything. And this is the title of the book I wrote. I want, I believe, I can. This is the second edition of my book. It's not like they write them in the Western world. No, no, no. I wrote it myself with a pen. No computers, uh, traveling at airports, 
waiting between matches, I kept writing. I just couldn't stand the thought of uh, taking with me to the other world everything I went through. I needed to share it with someone. There is no way that they cannot play tennis, I mean, with this grandmother. There is no choice, but I guess um, many things that you do in life when you are a child, it comes from what your parents are supporting you to do. And if I see that they are interested in it, um, I'll support them and uh, I'll try helping them, but I, I won't force them. Maggie was a top five player until forced out of the game with a terrible shoulder injury. She was rich enough to quit, but now she's back, having fought her way into the top 16 again.